I'm personally trying to give the player a, an empowerment fantasy. I'm trying to beat him down really badly at the beginning and ultimately see him rise above all odds to become the ultimate hero. In a simulation, we can do things that we not only can't do in real life, but we shouldn't do in real life. And it's fun and safe to do it in a simulation. And this is useful because we don't actually want to explore the stuff in real life. It's dangerous and we could get hurt or people can get hurt. But by exploring it in the simulated form, uh, you, you kind of get some of that experience and some of that knowledge and the wisdom that comes from it. And it actually allows us probably to make better decisions in real life. So what does a teenager want, right? What, what does a kid want? Well, when we're young, we, we could go to school, and we, can't really, we don't really have power. You know, our parents rule over our life, and we have to go to school, go to boring classes. So the teenagers, they, they have fantasies. They, they want to feel powerful. They have power fantasies, basically. Um, so a bunch of game was designed to make them feel powerful. You know, you are a superhero, you are a soldier on World War II battlefield, or you are some medieval elf uh, who can cast magic. This is all basically the, the equivalent of pulp comic books that you had back in the day where the little kid, uh, you know, he's on, in, on the beach and he's getting sand kicked in his face by the bully and he ultimately rises up and takes him down and that's uh, fundamentally what we craft. We can simultaneously love the feeling of being a character like Duke Nukem, but also appreciate what a uh, caricature of a, of, a, of a human is. Kill me. You know, he's simultaneously a role, mo role model and someone we should never wish to be. <laughs> that's, that's a dichotomy that is only rational to pursue in a simulated way. There's a preponderance of, of video games that appeal to teenage boys and their power fantasies because it is very easy to simulate the pull of a virtual trigger. There is no challenge to that at all. There is no future in that at all. I, I hate it with a passion. The reason there are so many guns in games is because guns provide a very abstract, useful, shorthand way of projecting power over a distance. It's got a great feedback loop. You know when you missed, you know, especially if there's like a pock mark on the wall beside them. Oh, I'll adjust a little. You know, it's got all of these things that like make it very amenable to interactivity, and that's great. But we know we can do that. And I think, you know, the reaction that I had and many people had to say playing Bioshock Infinite, where you know it takes a bit longer to get a gun, and I was sort of like. Okay, not feeling a little bit antsy, but not too much, really liking the world and you know, being up on Columbia and seeing all these things. And then all of a sudden, it's like I've got this uh, buzzsaw hook thing on my hand. And I'm shredding guys' faces, and all of a sudden, I'm realizing, wait, I actually was having a good time playing like the adventure game version of this game that had been up to this point. I didn't want to shred people's faces. Like, I actually didn't want to do that. If you see character developing in games today, it's terrible. You start really weak, and then you get a bigger gun, you get chills, and suddenly you're developing this monster, and that's how you solve problems in the world. And that's not how you solve problems in the world. It's bad teaching. I don't think that games need to be about empowerment, though I do think when I say that they unleash something in the player, uh, that, that feeling doesn't need to be empowerment. One of the most powerful experiences I've had recently in games was in Journey, where you're going on this adventure with another person you don't know who they are, but I've made a connection with them. And at one point, I lost my companion. I knew in my heart I couldn't go back, that you know probably I'd never find them again, so I had to go on without them. And that's not about empowerment. I spent a lot of time lately thinking about games for those people, people that have had a very different experience um, and may not necessarily be as interested in processing empowerment 
as processing the challenges of becoming a whole person in an environment that's constantly pushing back on them. All games, to me, are about giving the player a new experience, and sometimes that experience is not actually about empowerment. If you look at like Kira Takahashi's Tenyuanya Teens, that game is all about making the interface change and making you feel unempowered. <laughs> but it communicates the experience of sort of adolescence and you know being sort of uncomfortable in your own skin. Because games are about meaningful choices, they can be about empowering choices, but they don't necessarily have to be about that. I think there are different kinds of fantasies. So, you know, there are power fantasies, there are, um, you know, The Sims is a great example of, of a fantasy game where the fantasies are quite mundane. It's like you live in a house and you, you know, get a girlfriend and you, and you cook dinner. But what's powerful about that fantasy is that there's no consequences for, for failure. You could, you know, sit at home in a pile of your, you know, of your own feces and that's okay in The Sims, where in real life that's probably not advisable. One of my favorite games is Thief. And in that game, they do something where you are just dramatically weaker and you have much less uh, stamina and health than, than all of the opponents around you. And basically, it's all about you being smart. It's all about you outsmarting the world, you know, your enemies, the environment. And there's something about that role that is so much more interesting to me than being, you know, the big guy with tons of guns and magic powers. But the problem with power fantasy is that it's really fun when you're there. The problem with power fantasy is when you drop down the controller. And I think that we live in this reality, we don't live in that virtual reality. When we appeal to power fantasy, we fail a test of honor in some sense. It's not that power fantasy is all bad or that it doesn't work, it's that it's the easy thing. And if we always just take the easy route, we risk the, ghetto, the cultural ghettoization thing. My hope is that as developers get older, and as uh, video game players get older, they will demand different kinds of content and a broader range of content. And we won't be stuck with adolescent power fantasies masquerading as adult entertainment. I mean, the fact that mature games are all the ones with blood and guns in them is pathetic. And if we don't start doing better than that, we're in a world of trouble, and we're going to end up being marginalized just like comic books are in this, in this country. Uh, and we're going to be a dead medium before the end of this century, and instead of being the dominant medium of this century. <laughs> <laughs>